In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make some basic edits to pages built using the Divi theme or the Divi builder on WordPress. This is perfect if you have a WordPress website built by someone who has used the Divi theme or if you simply use the Divi theme yourself. Now, first thing you're going to do is find the page that you actually want to edit. Now, you can actually go down the left here to pages and explore that way uh, and find the page you're after. But one thing I recommend for people, especially if you haven't built the website yourself and you're looking for a simple way to find the page you want to edit, is to head up the top here to this home symbol where it has the name of your website and click that. This will take you to the public end of your website and you can find the page you want to edit and go from there. Now I'm going to go here to learn and go to Divi theme resources. I figured this would be a good chance to let you guys know about this page. It has some tutorials and resources for the Divi theme, uh, but essentially, this is a page I'm going to make some basic updates to. As you can see, we've got like a little bit of a heading here, some text, image, and other bits and pieces throughout the page. And we're gonna explore how this works and how you can make some basic edits to things like basic design, some basic text and basic imagery. So the way it works now, you can go straight up here to enable visual builder, and that will allow you to start making changes. But if you're not certain of a page, whether it's been built using Divi or not, one thing you can do to make sure if if something hasn't been built with the Divi Builder and you enable the Visual Builder, it will convert it to a Divi page and this may ruin the layout of the page. So I recommend actually going to edit page instead. Now this basically brings up the editor. If the page isn't built with Divi, you'll see all the content here. But luckily this page is has been built with Divi. So now I click edit with the Divi Builder. So it's a little bit of a back and forth, but if you're not sure, it's a great way to stop yourself from accidentally converting a WordPress block page to Divi and getting results that you don't want. Uh, I'm just gonna hit accept on that. So the first thing I wanna talk about now, every now and then this is gonna happen. It's gonna reload twice. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Um, it's just an issue that uh, I've actually seen a lot with the Divi theme and I've built almost 100 websites with it or a bit over 100 websites with it and it's just a consistent thing. But once you're in, you're in. And I just wanna point out a few things. We've got one row here and one column, some information. And again, we've got two columns here, two columns again, and two columns consistently throughout the page until we get to one column down here. Now I'm gonna explain how this works. So you can see if I actually stop here, there's a blue border around this section. This is one big section that I can add other smaller areas into. And the blue area is a section, the green area is actually a row that sits within that section. So we have a couple of rows here, we've got one row and another row here, as you can see highlighted by the green. And these green rows here allow you to add and change how many columns you have. So if you see here, I've got two columns. If I click on this little, the fourth icon here for columns, you'll see highlighted, I have one that's about two thirds and a third of column. If I go up here and highlight, you'll see I have one full column, which is why this line is the full width. So if I wanna change anything here with the columns, I simply hover over the green, click on this little column icon, and I can make this three columns if I want to. So now I have one column, another column, and then I have an empty column over here. So if I wanna add a module, which is what you add into those columns, you can see I can click here, and we have a series of modules that we can add in here, such as uh, you know, text or images. So if I wanted to add an image in here, um, I'm just going to take this off of the sidebar so you can see what we're doing. Now, this is, kind of a little bit undesirable at the moment, but it's actually converted it to a tablet view. So I'm gonna click down here, move this cross and change it back to desktop, just so we can see what we're doing. Uh, because I'm zoomed in a little bit, there's a few little, few little issues. So I'm just gonna zoom out. I'm going to resize this. So you can see now we have two images and the text because we've converted to three columns and I added a module in here. And I can then go in, click this image here and choose something completely different if I want to from my media library or I can upload. Maybe I choose this image. I click tick and now I have three columns added in there. And um, yeah, it's not exactly what I want, but it demonstrates how this works. So the blue area is a section. It's like a big container that holds your rows, which is the green areas. And then within those you have columns. The other thing too is if you want to reorganize columns a little bit, so we'll keep these three here for now. If I hover over the green area 
And you'll notice this in the blue area too. Every area has a little cog symbol. Second from the left. And the green area has a cog symbol, a cog symbol. And to follow through with the color coding, we've got blue and then green for rows. And then the actual modules we put into those columns are gray. But there's no little cog for columns themselves. So I actually go to the full row, click this little cog symbol. And you can see we have our three columns there. So I can actually go in and edit settings for each column if I want to. But the one thing I wanted to show you is if I take this center column here and move it down, I can re-change the order that the columns are in. I can move things around and change the order of the columns. I can even go up here and change it back to the way I had it before. So maybe I want to go to here. And you can see I've now got this issue where things are a little bit out of whack. But if I swap these columns around, I now have a structure similar to what I had before. Uh, but I'm going to find, I think it was this one here, which is what we had before. Click tick. So I've got the columns back the way I want them, but that's essentially how you can change column structures quite easily and uh, just change those things around. However, now I have these two modules, not exactly where I want them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move these around. And the way we do that is simply to hover over something or hover over this. I want this image to appear over there. If I hover over this image module with me, there's a little arrow section there that if I click and hold, I can just drag that across. You'll see a little gray area here. I can pop it beneath this image. Or if I go up above, I can pop it above the image and drop it there. And now I have things back the way they were, the way I want them. So next thing I can actually do is delete this. So I'll hover over this gray area and hit the little bin icon. One thing I will also touch on is if you want to say duplicate an area like this, there's also a duplicate icon, which is the little square with the little sort of L-shaped square behind it. This is also something you can do in each individual area. But if I duplicate this row, the same rules apply. I hit the bin icon at the end here and I can delete it. So that is how you can essentially move things around on the page using columns, moving modules from column to column, and that will allow you to place things where you want to place them. So the next thing I'm going to touch on, and because this is still just the basics, is making text changes. With the Visual Builder, you can go in, simply click and start typing. One thing I've noticed is that sometimes this can be a little buggy and it'll actually, while you're typing, just go back to the start. So there are still a few issues with Divi. While I think it's fantastic, once you learn your way around some of these little issues, uh, you soon can get very efficient with it. So I'm gonna remove this start typing bit here. And what I recommend, if you click and you wanna bring up the options, you do have to click off, come back, hover over this section, and on the gray box, click the cog symbol. Now this is where you'll notice the editor pop up. So any of these text areas have this editor. I can highlight this, it's currently a heading two. I can make it a heading three, which makes it smaller. I can make it paragraph, which is actually quite large because of some design settings I have. I'll get back to that. I'm gonna go back to heading two and I can do all sorts of things like make it bold, not bold. And you've got your italics here, things like bullet pointed lists. The usual things you'll find in a text editor are right here, such as adding a link. So if I highlight Divi theme and click insert link, I can type in address here, so HTTP S colon slash slash www.divi.com or something like that. I don't know if that's actually a website, let's hit cancel. You can add links into your text there and you can even change the alignment from right to left and all the options you normally have at a table. Change the color of the text if I want this here. Now, one thing I will add, if you're gonna change the color here, this is great for particular areas of text. So if I want to change Divi theme itself to purple, I can go, or pink, I can choose pink there. And I've got that, which doesn't look very good, but you get the idea. I'm gonna highlight that and just click X to remove the color. Also make this heading two again. I can go through and make all these changes to the text and change the formatting there. Uh, I'm gonna tick off for a second. One thing to remember, if you make changes that you don't like, you don't wanna keep, just click the X. If you wanna keep the changes, press the tick. So I'll click X here and go back to the way it was. Now, if I want to change the body of text here, it's the same thing. I hover over to the gray area, click the cog symbol, and I can go through and add bits of text. And it will appear here as I type it in the editor down here. So same as before, I can change any of the formatting. 
So what I want to touch on next here is that when I'm using this module, I have a link here. I can simply click the link icon to change that to a different link. But what if I want to change some of the design here? Maybe I want to change the color of links. Maybe I want to change the, the font on the top here, this content. This is where you type all the content for this box. If I head over to design itself, there's all these options, a whole bunch of them. We're not going to go through all of them. But if I click on text here, I can change the text color. If this is on a dark background, there is a section here for text color, and this is under text, where I can make it light. So if I've got this on a dark background, all the text will be made a lighter color. Change that back to dark. Or I can actually go through and choose the exact color I want here. Or on the color picker, I can find the color, and I've got green text at the moment. I can make it all capitals. I can change this so we've got uh, sort of like larger and smaller capital letters, underline, and I can really uh, make this look as horrible or as good as I want to. So I can go through, change these settings, add a shadow, um, basically change the letter spacing. Any of these options here, so this is the space between each letter. I can change the text size, change the line height, so we've got smaller and larger lines. And you can go through and change any of the sort of values here. If you use headings, such as a heading two, you can do the same with your heading text, choose a different font. Um, I don't have any headings in this text, so it's essentially the exact same options, but for headings, I can change it to Advent Pro if I want to, which is a completely different font. So you have all these settings under design, under text and heading text, to change the text you want and get the information in there. Now, if I click tick, it's gonna keep it this way. I think that looks horrendous, so I'm gonna click the X. And that's it. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to change the image, you can go in, click the cog symbol, click on the image, and pick a new image from your media library, or go to upload files. One thing I want to show you is, I've already shown you this quickly, but you will notice this image is a circle, and we have a square here. So there's a few more things, again, in the design tab for images, which is different for text. So if I click on design, I can go in here, with the alignment of the image, I can center or right align if the image is smaller than the space that it's in. So if this was a full column, it would move it from right to left and so forth. I'm not gonna worry about that. It's gonna keep it on um, center. I'm sort of clicking around there. Uh, but I can go into things like sizing and I can make this, if the image isn't the full width, I can turn on force full width. It will make the image the full width of the column even if it's smaller. Or I can change the max width to a percentage and then I can also change the alignment here again, around within there. I'm gonna reset this. If you wanna reset any settings, there's hover over and you can reset there. And there's just a few options. At the moment, the border option, you'll see it's got rounded corners. Uh, it's actually set on zero. So I've actually set this up in CSS uh, separately, unfortunately. So that's not, a, see, I've got a circle there. but. If I were to actually choose an image, I can go into border here and add curves to the edges. So we'll find, so say we've got this image here, design, border. You can see here, if I crank this up to say 25 pixels, I can curve the corners. If I turn it up to say 500, it'll turn it into a almost a pill shape. So you can change rounded corners under border. I can even unlink these and have this one at zero. So I have a cool little effect here of the image. It's pretty handy. Um, I am going to reset though. And I can add a border and like a red border, crank the width up. I've got a few options there to get things looking pretty good. I'm going to undo those options. Click OK. So that's essentially how you make basic text edits and basic image edits on a page you built using the Divi theme. I'm not gonna to go too much deeper, but if you do, I'm gonna show you how to save and exit in a minute. But if you wanna actually learn how the Divi Builder works, uh, there will be a video coming out soon. I'm gonna explain in more depth how it works and go through a lot more of how to adjust bits and pieces. It's gonna be a bit of a series, there's a lot to cover. So uh, please subscribe if you wanna see that in the future or check the description below. If you're viewing this in the future, it might already be up. Uh, so once we've done and we've finished editing our page, we're happy with it. One more thing I will touch on actually. 
So let's say we've got a section here. This section here has an image in the background and this section here is just white. What happens if I wanna change the background of this section? I can go into the blue panel here, click the cog symbol. Under background, I can change the color to orange. And it looks, once again, it looks horrendous. Um, but what if I wanna actually add an image? So what I'll do is I'm gonna go up here to image. There's a little image icon here, third from the right, and I can add a background image. such as, oh, this isn't really gonna be suitable, but let's just go with this. And you see I've actually added a background image to this. And if that image hasn't loaded, the background color is what will show instead. So maybe we make that black so that it all matches up. So you can add, change the background image. As I said before, you can then go into your text modules and change the text color to light. But you sort of get the idea of how that works. If you wanna keep it, hit tick. Otherwise, we're gonna click X. So those are basic uh, changes. Uh, this here area is black, but it will go back to white later, uh, just simply because I haven't changed it. And every now and then things aren't necessarily gonna be perfect, but you get the idea. Now, if I'm happy with this and I wanna save it, uh, I can go down the bottom here. This little purple button here is where most of your options are. Now, let's say I don't wanna save this. I can actually go up the top here to exit visual builder. And I can discard and exit. This will just throw away all the changes I made and not save the page. Or I can just hit save and exit and do it like that. But I'm gonna X out of this because if I wanna save changes as I go, I go down the bottom here to this little purple dot. And here's where I get a few options. Uh, I can add a layout, save the layout. I can trash the entire page and start blank. There's a few options here I can go through. What I wanna do for the sake of this video is just click save. And now it's saved, I can exit and it won't prompt me. And, and that's pretty much it. Now, another thing I'll touch on just while we have this open, if you're having trouble getting to any elements or you're not exactly sure how things are laid out, you can go down over here and there are ways you can change the layout for editing. I can click on this and I actually get like a, a simulated thing where you can see the section here in blue, the row in green, and then the modules within that row. And within this row here, you can see we've got a few, we've got the two columns we were playing with before with a picture of me. So if you're not looking to use the visual editor, you can click on this icon over here and you can go through and try these out. You can zoom out and see the whole thing from a small view. If you want to add things off to the side, I can go to desktop. I can see how it's going to look on a tablet and explore that, or I can see how it looks on a phone and explore how responsive the theme is, which most of it is automatically responsive, but there are some options we're gonna get into in another video. But it's pretty straightforward. Editing pages in Divi is pretty, is pretty easy, and while there are a ton of options, you don't need to know all of them if you're looking to just do the basics. So we're all done here and click Exit Visual Builder, and that will apply any changes because I saved it down here before. And that's pretty much it, that is how you can edit pages built using the Divi theme. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like. If you've got any questions about Divi, leave a comment below and I can either answer, maybe possibly make a video about it um, because this is a theme I like to do a lot of videos about because uh, I use it a lot. There's a lot to it. It's extremely useful and uh, easy to use. So um, yeah, I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you again soon. See you later.